Hey, good evening, and welcome to the pandemic version of Montpelier Civic Forum, the version where you don't necessarily have to go on town meeting day to vote. You can do absentee ballots, but you still have to get out and vote. And before you vote, you have to be informed about what, what you're voting for, and that's what these shows are about. We've got some excellent candidates for school board. We've got some city council candidates who are very good. Uh, we have a candidate who's running for a five-year term on, on the Park Commission, and that's good. We've got Bill Fraser coming in, talking about the budget. We have Jim Murphy coming in on the school budget. We've, we've got a lot of them, but the one I really enjoy is the one tonight, which is <laughs> Ann Watson, our mayor and former city council person, who I used to interview as a candidate, coming in to talk about from the mayor's perspective, what's going on with Montpelier. Yeah, well, thank you so much for having me, Richard. I am, uh, I think this program is just so great. I don't, I wanna make sure that you get enough credit for doing all of these programs. I mean, my goodness, I think this is such a service well, you that you know, do for the city. Well, you know my wife and this gets me away from her, so it's a service <laughs> for her as well. Uh, and this is, we did one of these last year and we, everyone enjoyed it. And what we do is we challenge you in your mind to envision driving around Montpelier with the mayor. And we're gonna drive around, we're gonna look at projects, we're gonna look at proposals, we're gonna look at things that, that might be, things that are, and things that we hope will be. Yeah, right. So let's start, <laughs> Ari, uh, where we're trying to get the communications together and coordinated. That's been an ongoing effort yeah. for years. Yeah. What's going on with that? Do you mean the Center for Mont Public Safety Authority? Absolutely. Yeah, so they are, uh, so just in case folks don't know, just to catch people up, uh, Montpelier is uh, in a collaboration with Barry about uh, public safety. And so what the focus of that group has been lately has, has been looking at our dispatch uh, services. And so uh, particularly what the technology needs are around uh, making sure that that infrastructure is um, going to be functioning well on into the future. Uh, and it, so, so what they've been doing recently is uh, they put out an RFP for request for proposal. Uh, thank you, a request for a proposal uh, for someone to do a, a needs assessment for uh, just looking at the infrastructure we have and where, like, where it needs to go in the future. And that report is supposed to be uh, finished and presented to the group within the next couple of months. So we'll know pretty soon. Uh, what uh, what the results of that are, and that'll that'll dictate uh, you know, potentially uh, where we spend some some money. <laughs> if I recall, and I did an exit interview with with Tony and an entrance interview with Chief Pete. Yeah. And Tony said the two systems weren't totally that far apart. Mm, yeah. Uh, so I know one of the things that we uh, are looking at now, and and actually it was pertains to uh, the uh, the current budget actually that's going to be on the town meeting day ballot is uh, we're, we're looking at potentially buying some new uh, console um, infrastructure for our dispatch folks um, because the the model that they have now may actually not I, I think the a manufacturer is actually going to discontinue it and so the um, replacement parts may not be available um, readily so that that is one indicator anyway that we may need to actually um, to to change that system. Now, as far as like how well those um, systems are compatible uh, with each other and, and speak to each other, um, uh, you know, I think to, that that study will tell you a yeah, little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So the study will give us some fiscal parameters on on what it might take to get those to mesh. Well, that's my hope, right? So they're gonna it's gonna give us an assessment, uh, basically of what our gaps are, uh, and so if there's if there are technology needs to uh, fill those gaps, then my hope is that they'll give us a ballpark about what those uh, what that might be. What's the advantage of having these two systems meshing? Well, so um, being able to um, there there is some usefulness in terms of. Um, redundancy, right? So if, if one goes down, that there's a, a way to uh, redirect uh, calls, uh, inter-municipal um, communications, uh, as well as, um, you know, thinking about uh, 
basically the the reliability of the infrastructure themselves. Uh, so you know whether that's based in radio or fiber optics, uh, all of that is uh, sort of at play here. Is there any talk of of uh, a police chase in Montpelier that's heading towards Barry that that somehow this equipment would give them a better heads up or vice versa? Well, I, I think we're we're just going to have to see uh, what the what that study says. Yeah. Uh, when we came to the water treatment plant, well, how is yeah. Berlin on this? Uh, are, why are they not members of this? Well, we, in the past anyway, have uh, made offers uh, about water deals, and they, they didn't want to take it. But um, but yeah. in terms of this communication equipment? Oh, in terms of the communication yeah, equipment. Why are I, they not oh, so involved? Oh, that's, so that's a good question. Um, I, uh, I know that there are, so uh, as a part of the... Um, Central Vermont Public Safety Authority. Mm -hmm. I know there is a, an organization that is a part of it uh, called uh, the Capital Fire and Mutual Aid um, uh, Group. And I don't think that Berlin is a part of that, but I'm not, I, I shouldn't Why, Berlin speculate. walks to its own drummer. Yeah, yeah, I suppose so. <laughs> uh, let's, uh, let's stay in Berlin yeah. for a second. Let's go down the hill. Yep. Uh, how are the speed limits doing? When we were talking a year ago, the neighbors had just come in saying, we want 25 miles per hour on that street. And Consul had come in and said, uh, 25 miles an hour, yeah. maybe 35. Yeah, well, you know, we haven't heard uh, much about that since, actually. Uh, we haven't seen uh, folks coming to us saying, um, you know, that it's since that discussion, saying that it's still too high, but we're certainly open to having that discussion. Uh, I know that they, I, I believe they put a, uh, uh, oh, what's the, the word for it? Uh, a speed sign, right? So that you can see how fast you're going. And I, I think that's been helpful. I'm gonna stay in that neighborhood. Okay. Uh, I know that Dan and uh, Jay, the counselors for, for District 3, have been looking jointly at opportunities for parkland. Mm, yes. And we had talked about this last year. Yeah. Uh, they've identified, I believe, now I might be wrong, uh, I think they're looking at that highly disputed piece um, down off of two uh, that used to have uh, the old house on it. Oh, Five Home Farm Away. Exactly. Yes. What are the legal hassles that surround that, or is that just... Uh, well, so, <laughs> how much time do you got? No. <laughs> Uh, so that um, property, uh, you know, it's well. So it's it's got, it's got a lot going on. One thing that's important to know is that uh, there was a, a nonprofit that was there that has since dissolved. Uh, but uh, on the way of, like I guess before they dissolved, they uh, sold a, a right of first refusal to another. An organization and um, and then uh, there at, at the same time there were two ease, uh, conservation easements or historic preservation easements on that one being on the land and one mostly being on the on the building though the that that part of the land where the building is as well um, so it's not totally clear who owns it uh, right now and uh, it's not totally clear how to resolve who owns it. And I know that a number of parties uh, have been meeting to try to, to answer that question because it is a really, uh, it's a really interesting piece of property. I mean, it's, it is right down there by the river. So it is, um, part of it is in the, I believe in the flood way, which means that that portion of it the, can't really be developed. Uh, but you know, there's this historic preservation easement on the building uh, because it was, um, it, that property was owned by uh, Jacob Davis, who was, I guess... It's an the, old property. Yeah, well, it was the site of the first residence, resident of Montpelier, which was um, Jacob Davis. But apparently that building that is there is not actually his house. Uh, so the, the building doesn't go back as far as that fellow, but... And you can tune in tomorrow night for the rest yeah, of this story. I know, I know. It goes on. <laughs> so don't expect anything this year on that except for exploration. Yes, 
Well, and, and I do hope that we figure it out because uh, I think that site has a lot of potential. Let's go up the hill, sure. over behind Sherwood or above Sherwood. Yep. We had talked about that last year. Mm. Could you describe that piece of property that the city owns? The Stonewall Meadows? Yes. Uh, well, so my understanding is that uh, we are um, in the process of... No, we own that. We own, yes, yes, we own. And I think there is some question about some of the boundaries. Uh, so that's still, uh, it may be resolved. The last I heard, we, I think it was resolved, but I, um, it might still be in process. Uh, but the, the hope is that we can turn that into a park. Uh, for what that do you side envision of the city. that uh, a park that would have swings and stuff like that, or picnic tables? Well, I think was uh, that actual forest park. Well, so I, I think that will be um, potentially a part of um, some some uh, input from the surrounding um, neighborhoods. I think that would be a really great process to go through to see what uh, what are the needs, what are the wants of the folks in that area. Is there any other space that we have a uh, green space, public green space potential in District Three? On south of the river? Uh, in District 3, that is probably the most promising site, particularly because we own it. Uh, but other than that, I don't, I, nothing comes to mind on that side of the river. Now I'm going to hop and skip you downtown so I don't forget it. Yeah. What about next to, um, between the grocery store and the art store? That lot right there oh, that, yes. that either is going to become a building or park space. Yes. Is there been any movement on thinking about what that empty space that people are walking and driving through? Yeah, so a couple points about that. So one is that uh, we um, had to make a decision about whether we were uh, basically going to um, ensure that we, the city had the title to that property or whether we would basically give that property back to the state, uh, it's, which is also its own kind of long story. Uh, but the point is, we, if we were going to um, have it be a park, then we had to own it, right? And so, uh, plus if, if we wanted to sell it, we could still do that if we owned it. Um, and so we did make the decision that we would like to have that, that control of the property. And so, we we did actually um, make a plan with the state so, so that we could um, have that the title to that property um, clear free and clear. Is there um, a possibility it might be a building? That is still a, a possibility, yeah, uh, which has yet to be resolved. But the second point is that in the meanwhile, uh, we've actually applied for uh, a grant to uh, turn that into uh, sort of a little pop-up park space, uh, which I, I think has a lot of potential and is very exciting. On the other side of that bridge. Yeah, right. So exactly between Shaw's and uh, the drawing board. Yeah, just next to the bike path. To the I'll walk you path. further. I'm just going into open spaces sure. right now yeah, and, go and for making it. sure that open spaces are covered. Yeah. Um, Dog River. There Dog was River. some discussion at one point of Dog River, no pun intended, of, <laughs> of Dog River being a dog run. I, fenced in dog run. Yeah. Is there any discussion that's, that's going on about that? That's a great question. We, uh, a few residents uh, contacted me about being interested in uh, dedicated dog park space that could be fenced in. Uh, and so I ended up working, or yeah, working with uh, the parks director and connecting the parks director with um, these residents about some potential locations. And there are there are a number of sites in the city that that could work for. Uh, Dog River is one of them, but there are a few other places around town too that were um, that were potentials. Uh, but the structure that we were looking at for that uh, was to have a, the kind of system where a group of dog owners would be uh, sort of the, the champions and caretakers of that. Um, that facility, uh, in in terms of like, you know, the 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 city could provide sort of um, you know help and whatnot, but hoping we were hoping for for some uh, self regulation. Yes, and and some dog loving champions uh, to to help make that happen. And so that that's still in in process, as far as I know. How would that affect the policy and the current policy in Hubbard Park, and how would that affect the policy in in over by um, 
the baseball field. Yeah, the North Branch. The trans. North Branch. Uh, so I think for now, if we were to, uh, I, I think that the rules would likely not change for now, um, based on uh, you know it, what's already established in Hubbard Park or the North Branch trails. Uh, but I could picture this space uh, where that, that's all fenced in could be a space where dogs can be off leash. And so we would may perhaps, I would anticipate anyway, making an exception for that kind of space. But I, but I don't think it would, at least at first anyway, change any of the rules for the other spaces. Is there any way of enforcing North Branch? I know people are upset yeah. because North Branch, you are supposed to walk dogs on lead. Yeah, yeah, no, that's, that's a good question. Um, and, you know, as far as I can tell... And it's an honor system. Yeah, it is, basically. And, you know, if, if uh, issues uh, escalate, then, you know, call, um, you know, the, the authorities to at least make a, a complaint or let folks know. Yeah. Or, or actually even, like, the Justice Center uh, to, to let, let someone know that, that problems are, have occurred, especially if they're recurring. Are we considering better signage there so that people are more aware well, I think that's that is uh, I think that's a good idea. <laughs> so, um, yeah, you know, as, as far as uh, what we can be doing to make that better, certainly better signage would be part of the solution. Uh, I want to uh, stay up on Hospital Hill. Yeah, that's where we were. Uh, the water plant up there. Yeah. What's going on? What's going on with the water plant and the finance of the water plant and our water bills? Yes. Yeah. Fair enough. So we actually were just uh, talking about that at our most recent council meeting. Um, so the city adopted a 50-year like, plan uh, for both the water treatment plant and the um, water resource recovery facility <clears throat> in terms of our water and sewer rates. And uh, so those, so we do need to increase the amount of funding that we're giving to our water and sewer infrastructure. Uh, and so the, those plans call for sort of a steady increase into uh, those water rates so that we can be uh, replacing and repairing infrastructure at a, at a more healthy and sustainable rate. So, so I think we're looking at, uh, for this next year, an increase of, um, I think it was about, because uh, inflation was 1.4, so I think we were at 2.5%, yeah. Do we foresee, um any shocks in water usage? I, I know the last great shock was when they changed the toilets at National Life <laughs> and made it more water efficient. Mm. And we hadn't <clears throat> planned for a decrease yeah. in National Life water usage that was that profound. Yeah. Well, actually, in the last couple of years, we've actually added some more users uh, to, the, to the water system. Uh, so actually uh, the, the amount of, of usages has gone up. So we're great. back in Berlin. I, Berlin's not going to come in. Well, as, as far as I know, no one has contacted me about them, them uh, jumping on. No. <laughs> uh, we talked to, about this when you were a candidate how many years ago? Yeah. We spoke yeah. about Berlin coming in. <clears throat> yeah, right. Um, let's stay up there. <laughs> oh, okay, let's talk about Berlin Pond. That's okay. nearby. Yeah. What about Berlin Pond? What's going on with that? We spoke about that a couple of years ago. Yeah, so there's uh, not really been any developments, uh, no pun intended. Um, th there's basically been nothing new on that in the last um, couple of years or, or so, yeah. Uh, the dire consequences that we predicted, mm. did that happen? So far, it hasn't, uh, which, which is good, but we still need to remain vigilant. Uh, what, some of the risks up there are uh, people uh, transporting uh, boats, uh, across uh, different bodies of water that might be bringing in uh, different kinds of uh, algae, basically, uh, <clears throat> and other mi microscopic organisms. Um, particularly, you know, at the time, we were very worried about cryptosporidium, which is very hard to detect, uh, but can make people very sick. Uh, and that's, uh, that's still a concern, and we certainly hope that people are taking precautions if they uh, move their boats between bodies of water. Now, that entire issue not only involved the courts, but it also involved Montpelier in the legislature. Mm, yeah, yes, it did. Is there anything sitting before the legislature right now in terms of Montpelier in the legislature? Uh, well, yes, so not necessarily, not, not, not pertaining Berlin to Berlin Pond. Pond but uh, <clears throat> to stay in that boat of, no, no pun intended, to stay <laughs> in 
Montpelier and the legislature yeah. and things that go before the legislature? Sure. So uh, within the last couple of years, we passed a, a non-citizen voting measure, right. uh, which did not pass the legislature last year. It did pass the House, but got stuck in the Senate. And uh, that bill has already been reintroduced for Is this Is there another session. city or town that, that's also that's passed that sort of legislation? Uh, I... Uh, Did Burlington pass that? You know, I'm not sure. I don't. I don't know where where other um, cities are at with it. I know they were considering it as well as Winooski. Uh, they were also considering it, um, but uh, I but I don't know where that is at right now. But we have some um, some new leadership in the Senate, and so I think we have a, a fair shot of that passing uh, potentially this year. Now, speaking again of Montpelier and the legislature, sure. marijuana and a marijuana place where one can buy marijuana. Yes. That's going to be on the ballot. Could you explain what we're voting on on that? Yeah, sure. So what Montpelier has currently is a, a cannabis dispensary, a cannabis, uh, dispensary uh, for medical purposes. Where right? is that? I believe it's down by, um, oh gosh, where the uh, Bare Naked Growler is down that uh, part of the way, I, I always think of that as like where Restore used to be, right, but like right. that's not a helpful reference anymore. Um, and the computer barn used to be. Yes, <laughs> yeah, right. So, <clears throat> but it's down down that way. Uh, so, the difference between uh, what we have now and what's on the ballot is uh, the the legislature provided uh, the a pathway for towns to approve uh, retail cannabis, uh, or basically non medical um, cannabis to be sold in. Uh, in towns and, and cities, but it has to go through a, a particular approval process. And so one of the steps there is that it has to be approved by the, the voters uh, of the town. So it's going to be, it, it is on, it's on our town meeting day ballot on March 2nd. Uh, and so the, the city of Montpelier will be able to weigh in as to whether or not that's something that we want to have in if our city. If we say yes on March 2nd, yeah. 2021, when do we possibly see a marijuana dispensary and is or a marijuana retail store mm -hmm. and is there any zoning that would have to be changed to allow that so that's a good question I my understanding is that it would still take quite a bit of time potentially like a year or so before we would see uh, a store opening but uh, I'm not sure about the, the zoning question and that that's that's a valid and very good question and I think it's worth um, uh, revisiting yeah so we're talking about 2022. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. in, in real time, mm -hmm. in stoner time, possibly 23 or 24. <laughs> um, is there anything else that the state is doing uh, that affects us that, other than allocating COVID funds? And, and well, I was going to say like the that. COVID funds are, are pretty big right now. I mean, we are uh, certainly hopeful that uh, the city of Montpelier will be able to get um, some of these funds for... Uh, potentially making up lost revenue as well as construction projects. So that's that's on our radar. Besides that, uh, uh, I can't think of any other bills that we have pending. Um, yeah, but we're we're we actually have a legislative uh, agenda this year that um, has laid out what our priorities would be as a council. That things that we hope. Um, well, what? How does that differ from past years? Well, we've uh, <clears throat> we've had legislative I mean, agendas. Every year we have better communications. We have, you know. Sure. Yeah. Um, and the like. And the like. Uh, we've so in the in the past, you know, when uh, you know, for example, John Holler was a mayor. He was also a, a lobbyist, so he was up there all the time. So we had um, kind of a direct connection to folks in the the legislature, uh, but. Uh, you still, the, don't you have a former mayor who's head of the Appropriations Committee? Indeed we do, <laughs> which is great. And don't you have another former council person who in the state Senate? Who is also in, in, in the Senate, yeah, right. Uh, so, you know, so we, we certainly do have connections, but uh, we've been making, at least uh, as a council, we've been making more of an effort in the last uh, couple of uh, years uh, to, uh, to have our legislative delegation in to council meetings to talk about our agenda what we hope um, they have on their radar and what, um, what, the, what we hope they will pass. Uh, yeah, so, uh, and yeah, just an anticipating that there are things that are happening in the legislature that affect us 
um, and there's money to be had that uh, we could maybe potentially tap into. Again, speaking of state initiatives mm -hmm. that impact Montpelier, I believe on your phone you have an app oh, for, yes. the, for the Jitney bus. Yes, yeah. So, Would you talk about that program? Sure, yeah, absolutely. So uh, it's called My Ride, and this is a program that's pretty similar to Uber or Lyft, if people are familiar with those apps, where you can, um, it's a flexible schedule, flexible route uh, uh, situation where on, your, on the app on your phone, or you can call, or you can use the website, uh, you can say, I would like a ride from this location to that location at uh, a designated time. And so it'll, it'll show up basically at your doorstep and deliver you to wherever you want to be um, within a certain area uh, within Montpelier and, and actually uh, Berlin. Yeah. So that would include going to the hospital? Exactly, yes. Would it include going to Price Chopper or Shaw's up on the hill? Um, I don't know if Shaw's is in the zone. I'd have to check okay. the, the region, but we were intentional about having it include uh, the, the mall and the hospital, yeah. So, so people can get to doctors. What are the hours for this? Um, the, the standard hours that we have for the circulator? Yeah, uh, yep, so uh, I believe the earliest that you can book a ride is 7 a.m. and it goes till about 6 p.m. Is there a copay? No, oh, thank you. It's free. <laughs> so uh, that, uh, for me, uh, like, was, was pretty appealing. I actually use it just about every day. Um, it is because I, I both live and work in the designated area, and so it is how I get to work uh, and home from work every, every day, basically. Yeah. Now, this is not a sucker question, you know, <laughs> which you probably don't have an answer. Um, will they, if and when the Mountaineers are playing this summer, <laughs> Will they pick people up from the, the stadium? It's, it's within Montpelier. Yeah, so uh, I was actually just talking about this very question with Brian Gallagher um, not Who that long Brian ago. Brian Gallagher? Thank you. Brian Gallagher, um, is he the executive director of the Mountaineers? I think that's, I think that's um, true. So, uh, yeah, so I was talking with him actually about what, his, what the plans are for the Mountaineers this coming summer. And they're hopeful still. They're still... Uh, waiting to see what what all happens, but they're still hopeful that they will have a season um, this coming summer. But I was talking with him about whether or not this could be extended uh, in terms of hours for it to to work for uh, the for the Mountaineers games, um, and I, I think that's a lovely possibility. But I think it would probably take some uh, you know some collaboration, obviously, between uh, the Mountaineers and Green Mountain Transit, who is running uh, the My Ride program. Is there any possibility under discussion, not this year certainly, Montpelier High School? About uh, what now? Being able to transport kids from general areas to Montpelier High School? Oh, that's already happening, um, certainly. I mean, I, I think that's sort of happening in an, on an ad hoc kind of basis, but uh, the, all the administrators are aware of the program and have been advocating for it with students, uh, particularly like if if they are stuck and need a ride home, uh, if, they, if they live in the area um, that the bus serves or that the, uh, the vehicle serves, then you know, there's, that's, it's a great option. I think one of the limitations though is that it does not serve all the, the areas of Montpelier yet. Um, so, what areas are not served? Well, well, one of the areas that comes to mind right now is uh, sort of out by uh, Dog River, like the train station or the creamy stand. Um, that is not in the service area presently. But if this is a successful pilot, then I think it is very likely that the service will expand and include those places. And I know the area around Dog River is a favorite of yours because <laughs> it has one of your favorite projects, the treatment plant. And, that's true. <laughs> Would you discuss the project at the treatment plant, which, was, which you shepherded through? Well, I, I think a lot of the credit really should go to the, the staff uh, there for... But it's an imaginative project. Oh, indeed. It, it's absolutely, it's very, um, it's very forward thinking and I'm, I'm just thrilled that that is moving forward. Could you describe it? And, yeah, absolutely. So, uh, so <laughs> it, one of the reasons I love it because it gets a little science-y, so I'm going to try to not go too much into the science, but 
Okay, now stop. Yeah. Right. What do you do for a living? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, so I, in addition to being mayor, I am the um, a science and math teacher at Montpelier High School. Mainly, I teach physics. That's uh, that's my passion. <laughs> and a former coach. Yes, I also um, have coached uh, ultimate frisbee for many years, as well. So let's um, get sciencey. <laughs> anyway, right. So for any wastewater treatment plant, uh, they that 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 uh, effluent that um, or I should say that waste. Uh, generates methane, and methane is a greenhouse gas on its own, and it's very it, it's it's flammable, right? So uh, we could actually uh, burn that methane uh, to uh, reduce the amount of greenhouse gases that we as a city are emitting, and at the same time generate uh, heat or electricity, uh, which can then offset any fossil fuels that we might be using for heat or, or electricity. So this project uh, was designed to significantly ramp up um, the amount of intake that, that of like um, liquid waste that we were taking, so that no, we have new li liquid waste customers. I imagine yes, exactly, uh, th and those are all still in in process because it's um, still being constructed. Uh, but the plan is to significantly increase that amount of waste so that it is economically feasible to, uh, to burn that methane, and that's going to make the wastewater, uh, the water resource recovery facility uh, be thermally uh, net zero, or in other words, it won't require any fossil fuels to heat that facility, which is a huge win. Uh, and then in a, anything over and above that's, uh, of energy that's generated uh, will be turned into electricity, which we will then sell back to the grid, uh, which obviously also is great because uh, since that's an organic um, uh, source, that uh, counts as, as a renewable uh, resource and is a, a great base for electricity because it can be on all the time and it's not dependent on the weather, right? Like <laughs> uh, wind or, and, or solar might be dependent on the weather. Uh, so it's a it's a uh, wonderful resource for the the city of Montpelier. And you take pride in it. Oh, I'm I'm thrilled. <laughs> Let's go back to District Three again. Yes. I'm top scotching around, which That's I okay. didn't want to do. Um, okay, and that brings the elephant in the room as yeah. we cross the street going south. Yeah. And we head across that bridge. Yeah. And we stare at what would be a parking garage and a hotel. Yes, right. What is the status besides it's still caught up in court? No, that's that's exactly it. It's still caught up in court, and and again, we're we're just waiting for uh, decisions to be made about that, and and we'll we'll roll with it, what, however it goes. Is there any indication, uh, given COVID and all, yeah. and the realities of tourism, is yeah. there any indication whether there will be a hotel? You know, again, has have, have, have the Bashara family spoken? To have you asked not, the Bashara family that issue? No, not to my knowledge. Yeah, yeah. So we'll we'll just we'll just have to see. Yeah, and, and I think uh, uh, you know I think we're all certainly hopeful that uh, we will get to a point where travel is no longer restricted. I mean we're obviously not there now, but with a vaccine on the horizon, I'm certainly very hopeful that uh, that the restrictions will start to be lifted. That we'll start to see the the tide turn there, um, and that that was. I know this is not what you were asking about, but I mean, that was that question of what is the timeline for COVID was a relevant question for us when we were making our budget uh, for this year. How so? Well, so <clears throat> um, have you had your uh, meeting with Bill yet? I, I hate to say this, no. Okay. But, but by the time you're watching okay. this, it might be on the air. <laughs> sure. Uh, well, so just for, so you may end up talking about this with him as well, but just for context, uh, we had a significant shortfall in revenue in the city budget uh, projections for this year. And so to make up the money, the one question was, you know, do we look at delaying projects or do we look at um, uh, cutting positions? And really that was a question about, is this a short-term or a long-term problem? Because if it's a long-term problem, then we have to be honest about the services that we are gonna be able to afford to provide. Um, when and, you talk about projects, does yeah. that include the level funding of streets? 
of it, do, it does. Um, and what is the level of funding of streets? Sure. So I know what it is, but yeah, everybody yeah, else doesn't. Yeah, no, fair enough. Uh, so a number of years ago, we uh, realized that uh, there that we were underfunding uh, our streets, right? So in order for streets to maintain an acceptable level uh, of condition, uh, we would need to be putting. Um, Five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, there. right. It was it was a significant amount of money in more than what we were putting into um, uh, our capital projects, uh, capital uh, improvement plan uh, funding, and and so we we <laughs> went on a track to to ramp up our funding of streets and sidewalks, so that we could be at what we would consider a level, um, uh, basically a steady state. Uh, level of funding for all of our streets and sidewalks so that they could maintain an acceptable condition uh, over time, right? Because it's always better to, uh, to be doing that sort of routine maintenance that needs to be done so that, they can, that their longevity uh, can be fully realized. Because otherwise, if you s start to let them go, then the rate of deterioration accelerates. Then we're constantly patching. Not, and not just patching, but doing major overhauls. Um, over time, um, so the construction projects that we are uh, are looking at putting off um, in the short term are uh, they're more of these sort of bigger construction projects while maintaining some of the more um, just maintenance level. Work. So it would be we try and do one street or two a year where we do a complete street. Yes, right. And Would that be postponed for this year? So there are, yeah, so there were some streets that were postponed, uh, but not all of them. So for example, uh, Hubbard Street is, also, is still on the list. Uh, there's a stretch of Berry Street that's still on the list, um, things like that. In terms of sustainability of the budget, yeah. eventually we're going to have to yes. sit and return to that, or we're going back to losing hubcaps. Absolutely, and so we are going into that eyes open and planning for that now, and so we're already talking about uh, having a bond to do that catch-up work when it feels more fiscally appropriate to do so. What happens to the projects pre-pandemic, the big projects that yeah. we were discussing when we went through this city yeah. budget last year, and I'll give you two of them. Yeah. The downtown, master downtown plan where we had traffic circles and yeah. we had major sidewalk yeah. adjustment. What happens to that and what happens to the post-pandemic recreation center yeah. that wasn't budgeted to have a significant ventilation rehab? Yeah, no, absolutely. Those were two projects that I was particularly looking forward to, to seeing um, some change, some progress towards our, our complete, uh, or our, our um, Barry Street, Main Street um, right. traffic oh, study. Exactly. Yeah. So what happens to that and what happens to the recreation center? Well, so it, it just gets delayed. I mean, these are projects that are still on our radar that we have uh, plans for. And it, I mean, the, the Barry Street, Main Street uh, traffic plan was always going to be realized in pieces. So we were always going to have to take it one piece at a time, like one chunk at a time. And my highest priority was uh, the fixing the Berry Street, Main Street intersection. The dangerous intersection. Yes, which we had decided should there should be a traffic light there. Uh, but we, the, we just don't have the funds uh, this year. Does that take out smart lights as well? Uh, I believe the cost difference was, um, we were, I think we were going to go. Um, the smart, to, to lights smart lights are yeah. what are smart lights? Uh, so they're coordinated uh, lights with other lights in the area. So they would be coordinated, say, with um, Memorial Drive and Main Street. Uh, but that, uh, I, I, I'm, I'm not too worried about that part of it. I think that transition, uh, if I recall, we were, we were planning on just going straight, straight for that. Yeah. What about the solar panels on City Hall and, and the like? The, the idea of putting more solar capacity on, on city buildings, has that fallen to the wayside? Um, I am not sure. So I don't think we actually have solar panels on City Hall. I thought there was a discussion of increasing well, so we have, solar presence. So we do have, uh, so, so this, the city has um, what's called power purchase agreements 
with two solar fields. Uh, one is actually on Log Road in Montpelier, but the other is in Sharon, Vermont. Uh, so one of the discussions that is upcoming is that we will have the opportunity to buy those, the, um, those arrays. Uh, and I, I think it will likely be in the city's interest to do that, to, to buy those. It will be uh, cheaper than paying this uh, third party. Uh, but uh, but it will take it'll take money to do that, and we, you know whether that's something we start setting aside money for now or whether it's a bond. I mean that's that's still a part of the discussion. Yeah. How are the fiscals looking for the district heat? Uh, well, so well, I don't know if you saw the recent Times article, Times uh, Argus article about that, but uh, you know in terms of uh, I, I realize this is not your question, but. Uh, in terms of service, I think uh, the city and, and folks, generally speaking, are satisfied with this level of service that they've been provided. Um, unfortunately, you know, no one anticipated that. Uh, the price oil, of oil. Yeah, the oil prices would be as low as they are, uh, and so the the projections are they're just not as good, or the I should say the the cost savings um, that we were hoping for are not being realized right now, um, but. You know, like who also who would have guessed that you know there was going to be a pandemic, right? Like it's it's really tough to anticipate how uh, those prices are going to go. So I'm I'm still hopeful that 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 will be a, have been a good decision for folks um, in the long run, particularly in terms of climate change. You know, knowing that uh, folks were able to switch over from burning oil to burning wood chips. I mean that that is a good thing. Yeah. I'm going to stay on that side of town. We're in that, that building at 302 at, at the roundabout. Yep. We're right near the bicycle trail. That's yeah. another one that, that you take pride in. Oh, my gosh. Could you talk about the bicycle trail? Sure. And, and, and visit the distillery at the same time. Sure. Uh, so, I mean, as everyone probably knows, we, we were able to complete that shared use path um, basically just in time for uh, the, the pandemic. My goodness, that was such a lifesaver uh, back in last March when we were sort of told to, uh, to not be you know, going, going places, but we could still be on the, on the bike path. That was, that was huge. Um, and so that, that stretch now completes, uh, it's, it's called the Sibuinabi Path, which is an Abenaki phrase for um, river water. I'm glad that you said it, not I. <laughs> yeah, I had to practice it. Um, and so it connects basically Gallison Hill all the way uh, through to Main uh, oh, not to Main Street, to the Rec Building. Another is... See, now we're part of that, that intersection. Yes, and right. the discussion of the intersection exactly. of, of Main and Barry Street. Yeah, right. And how, so part of that uh, connects. Barry Main Street traffic study was to figure out how to connect uh, just that short section between the rec building and where the um, shared use path picks up on Main Street. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we'll. <laughs> do, do people use the walking, the multi purpose path? Oh my goodness, they have, it has been significant. Uh, we were getting lots of wonderful positive feedback about uh, the shared use path. Well, when so, you talk about bad timing, uh, the distillery has to have had bad timing. Well, you know, so f uh, for what I hear, no one has uh, told me anything about uh, that um, from, from their perspective. But, but it's a lovely facility. It is a lovely facility, and I am thrilled that they were able to uh, convert to, to making hand sanitizer. I don't know if you, if folks are aware that you can buy hand sanitizer from them. That's that's huge, uh, and uh, you know I think with the the distillery along with other restaurants and um, bars in town, uh, I you know I think it makes a, a real difference to them when folks purposefully get takeout, uh, are are able to um, you know spend their money at at uh, these these businesses. Now we're walking down Berry Street. And yeah. We're walking by the distillery, yeah. and we turn and we look north. Yeah. Do we see housing? Well, <laughs> no, I'm talking about this year, next year. Well, what is going on with Savings Pass? That's a, a great question. So, um, you know, there's been a lot of. I, I know there's always been a lot of talk <laughs> <laughs> about uh, housing in Savings Pasture, but one of the uh, things I, I can talk about for sure is that we, as a city, have 
uh, we actually just at our last meeting looked at some potential zoning changes uh, to... Is that on top of the master plan revision? Uh, you mean, yes, yes. Uh, that, yes, this is something that um, we're, we're going to be taking up in the next uh, couple of weeks. What would those do? So this was uh, mostly about looking at uh, traffic impacts. Uh, because if, if we are able to put more housing up in Sabins, there may be some, some traffic impacts. And so uh, we were looking at uh, how the zoning um, talks about traffic and the requirements uh, for new developments, uh, their impact on traffic. Now, yeah. I might be wrong on this, and yeah. if I am, we're going to cut this out of the script. <laughs> okay. Um, that, en that entrance into the distillery is called... Gin... Oh, Gin Lane. Gin Lane. Oh, if, is it Gin Lane? Yes, Gin Lane. Right. Yeah, right. The Gin Lane could actually go straight up that hill? That it was designed so that Gin Lane could go up the hill? Yeah, so especially as uh, the distillery was being planned, uh, there was a lot of coordination that happened for potential future um, development in that Sabin's Pasture area. Yeah. And there was work done adjacent dealing with infrastructure matters that would benefit potential development? Indeed, there were uh, there was infrastructure that we um, put in uh, for water and, and uh, I, I'm not sure if it's sewer as well, but certainly at least for water uh, in connection to the distillery, but also uh, under the railroad tracks uh, for any potential uh, development uh, across the way there in Sabins, yeah. Now, the Economic Development Corporation was working on this. Yeah. Montpelier Alive is still around. Yep. The Economic Development Corporation, what is the status of that project? Oh, sure. So the Montpelier... Could you explain what the Economic Development yeah. Corporation is? So just a little bit about the history. We had an Economic um, Development um, Master Plan, EDSP, Development Strategic Plan, um, that laid out some goals for the city in terms of housing and jobs. And out of that, one of the recommendations was the creation of this development corporation. So we, uh, the city, uh, voted to form that and uh, get, uh, they have their own board now and, uh, so, and their, own, uh, their own charter, I suppose, their own, their own rules. Uh, but yeah, so they've had uh, a couple of executive directors um, over time. And where they're at now is that they don't have an executive director, but rather they are um, s s hiring people uh, for uh, specific projects. Are they in the city budget this year? They're not. Yeah, so this year uh, th there's, there's no funding uh, planned for them, but, uh, but you know, we, we're actually actively talking with them about what makes sense for the future. So... Um, you know, I don't, I don't, uh, speaking for myself, I don't see them as, as going away. I think our relationship may change or uh, the way that, um, yeah, there, there, just, there may be some changes, but I, I think uh, they've, uh, there's still some great potential there. We're walking down Berry Street by the Recreation Center. Is it going to yeah. be closed this summer, given ventilation and given the masks and, and all that? You know, uh, again, it's tough to say sort of where we'll be at um, by the time we get to the summer. I, all I can say is that for now it is closed. Uh, yeah. What is the current thinking in recreation about the summer camp over by the pool? And what is the current thinking of the pool for this summer? Yeah, yeah. So the, uh, the camps, well, so just for context, the city did run camps last summer. Uh, and we were, there were provisions that... Uh, you know, child care providers had to meet in order to operate, and we were able to, to meet those provisions. And so we anticipate that we'll be able to do that again this summer. Um, that, and, and there's certainly a demand for it, you know, with um, <laughs> parents... Kids penned, uh, kids penned in their houses? Yeah, right, absolutely. You know, that, that sometimes is a matter of uh, the question of whether or not people need to um so you anticipate to, ample demand uh, oh yeah ample demand exactly i mean people are uh potentially staying home from work if they don't have child care right so so this is a, a huge a huge need for folks um, what about the pool 
Um, again, we'll, I think we'll just have to see. It was closed last summer. Yeah, well, and, and, and that is absolutely a possibility for this summer as well. Yeah, so we'll, again, we'll just have to see where we're at. We're walking downtown. Let's skip downtown because I'm going to come back to it in a second. We're yeah. going up to Hubbard Park. Yeah. Anything, any changes that you see? Uh, any, will there be activities on that little stage that they've put together or that? Uh, I get, well, so um, I believe I saw that there was a, like a hot chocolate uh, event that was happening up in Hubbard Park. And I know they've been doing uh, walks uh, through Hubbard Park. And there was a, a version of the Enchanted Forest uh, that they did back in uh, October. Um, and I, I think we can continue to do these kinds of socially distanced events. Uh, but that's, that's about so it. So Hubbard Park, the life of Hubbard Park remains the life of Hubbard Park. Yes. Well, in a, I mean, we may not have Parkapalooza, but, uh, but generally speaking, yeah. And we certainly want to encourage people to, to use the park. Let's go back downtown. Uh, we're, we're heading down towards downtown, and we're going to turn over the bridge, and we're going to go north on Main Street. Yeah. And we see the source of controversy. We see a big sign. What's your take oh, on, on yes. the controversy over the sign? Yeah, yeah. No, I, I, I certainly hear folks, uh, folks' complaints about the sign. You know, I, um, just from a perspective of the process of what it went through, um, that, that uh, all of the, the sign designs uh, went to multiple council meetings uh, for approval. It just took so long. It was so long ago. It was. It was, a, it was a long time ago. In all honesty, when I saw it go up, I was like, oh, right, I'd forgotten that that was even happening. Um, and then it did go through, uh, it, it went uh, before uh, you know, the design review committee, um, and they were able to uh, give feedback, and some of those um, suggestions, I, I guess, were taken into account in the, in the, the design. Uh, but, um, but yeah, you know, it, it did make me think about, uh, I think mostly folks, is the, the complaint that I was hearing the most was like, well, I, we didn't get to see this, right? Like, you know, I, I didn't get a chance to weigh in on it or, you know. Why Again, is, the delay was so long ago. Yeah, yeah. It was like, why is this a, a surprise? And I, I hear that, you know, I, it, it really made me think about like, well, what are better ways that we can, that we can communicate about that sort of thing? And it, it was a long time ago. Um, and so, uh, you know, open to suggestions there. You know, how can we be using the, the city website better or listservs better, like that, that kind of thing. Well, there are some subtle public policy things on those signs. Uh, yeah. The business district to the east, when you go out of town, you can actually see that there's a business district to mm -hmm. the east. Yeah. That's yes. a policy decision. Yeah, that's huge. Uh, Barry Street, you know, that's a policy decision yep. that, that people are pointed towards that. Yeah. Uh, <clears throat> several of the signs point to Hubbard Park for the first time and yep. tell yep. people that Hubbard Park exists. Yep, it's key. Uh, is everyone on council pretty pleased with that project? You know, I think so. Uh, I th uh, we actually haven't talked about it very much, but uh, as far as I've you know talked about it with with folks on council, um, I think people were were pleased with the signs uh, generally. But um, you know the the difficult part now is that of course if if people even wanted to move that that one sign, I think mostly people are generally okay with most of the signs. Um, it's just the the one right that is um, the, the sticky point. It would actually cost us quite a bit of money to to remove it. Um, or, or even to move it at all. So, um, so you know, I, I think... Well, if we can't shrink the domino sign, we certainly can't yeah, move right, that one. Right, yeah, no, it's, it's true. Um, in terms of downtown, yeah. when the eviction freeze eventually ends, yeah. Yeah. what, 30% of, of small businesses across America are behind in their rent payments? Yeah. Yeah. Do you foresee... A jigsaw puzzle downtown. This is not only our downtown. This is right. every downtown yeah. and every city suburb. No, oh, absolutely. Do you foresee a jigsaw puzzle with some unsightly pieces missing? Well, you know, I uh, I do worry about that. But uh, and my my normal optimism is like somewhat uh, sobered in this because I think it's really important that we t be honest about. Uh, sort of where where we're at uh, as a, as a downtown. Uh, you know, where are we at as a downtown? Yeah, yeah. Well, so actually, I 
uh, was in touch with Dan Groberg, the executive director of Montpelier Live, uh, about this very question. And he uh, said that back in December, uh, s about 75% of businesses were reporting, self-reporting, that uh, they were making at least 75% of what they made in the previous December, the pre-pandemic uh, December. Um, and there were a significant number of those that, were, that had made uh, at least 90% of what they had made the previous de uh, December. So that is, um, that I, I found out was, was cautiously encouraging um, that folks are starting to, to re-emerge -em uh, financially. Um, that, that does not necessarily parse out how retail businesses are doing um, as separate from you know, bars and restaurants. And it that also- That must be brutal for bars and restaurants. Indeed, yeah, right. So I, I you know, don't have clear data about that, but, and, and that's uh, the, the part that um, it, I think you know, bars and restaurants play a key role in the culture of, of our city. And so you know, I'm, it's something I'm certainly paying attention to. Um, but at well, the same time, we can't time, discount the idea of the arts oh, and trying to yeah. make a play work with a third of the people. Oh yeah, no, absolutely. In the, the audience, the, absolutely. The the arts industry also significantly affected uh, by by the pandemic. So again, also that's a, an industry that I'm, um, you know, keeping a close eye on. Again, uh, but is there anything that we can do to kind of bring ourselves back together and rend the whole so that people are out communicating with each other and, and basically being Montpelier as we knew it, in a sense. Well, and so I, I, I hear that it's, it's also a tricky ask, right? Because we can't have the kinds of gatherings that we, that we used to have, at least not under the current restrictions. Uh, but I think as far as, as we can, for those who are able, it means the world to, uh, to, the, to the arts uh, industry as well as to, to bars and restaurants when you um, purposely uh, spend money locally. You know? um, so that, that's something that I've, I've tried to keep in mind, uh, even for, for myself, that, it, that it's, it means a lot to, to those folks. Now I'm gonna close this the same way I closed it last year, except for now, the mayor doesn't have mayor's hours anymore. <laughs> what, what's That's the status of, of City Hall opening again? Uh, so uh, City Hall is open, I believe, um, something like Tuesdays and Thursdays, um, but it is otherwise closed. Um, and uh, well, it was open. I, I actually should probably go check. So I apologize that I don't that I don't fully know. Um, but you could also make an appointment. Um, to, to see any of the city staff you need to see. The mayor still does not have her hours. Right. Well, when we're allowed to and City Hall is open, yeah. will you reestablish mayor's hours? I, I would like to, yeah. No, absolutely. I, there were, people actually came to those office hours, <laughs> to, the, to the mayor's hours, and I would like to do that again. But in the meanwhile, I am happy to have conversations, uh, to have meetings with folks anytime. So. Just be in touch and we'll find a time that works. Is the mayor of Montpelier zoomed out? Oh my goodness, <laughs> so many Zoom meetings. You know, for as many Zoom meetings as I am a part of, I am always happy to still, to still meet with people, yeah. Mayor, thank you so very much. Yeah. Uh, I, I look forward to <laughs> next year when we'll do this walk around the town. Yes. And we'll talk about, hopefully we'll talk about the um, resurrection of the community of Montpelier and how successful it's been. Yes, I look forward to that discussion for sure. What I look forward to is you voting on town meeting day. Isn't that a good segue? Yeah. <laughs> of you getting out there and actually responding to your absentee ballot or showing up on town meeting day, because it's really important. In fact, it's more important now than ever to weigh in and that we have wider participation. Uh, but before you do that, watch the shows. Get to know what the candidates are about. Uh, hear about the budgets. And basically, tell your friends. It's on Orca Media on YouTube, on the YouTube channel. 
and it's on the cable channel and i thank you for watching